a moment. And uh, Nathaniel, I know you've been up there for an hour, but you're young and full of life. So if you'll just, as the good brother Shelton would say, if you'll just play melodiously for a few more moments. I'm, I'm going to be brief. I just want to share, I want to just share a just a brief thought with you. I'm not even going to call this preaching. Exodus, Exodus 16 and 1 says this. And they took their journey from Elam, and speaking of the children of Israel. And all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin. And that's not sin in the context of sin, but which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. So from Elam to Sinai was about a 15-day journey. And it's at Sinai where God begins to give the law and begins to give instructions to Moses to give to the people about, again, ultimately it was, it was for how they were going to live in the promised land. God wasn't giving them the law for how they were going to live in the wilderness. And so that was, that was 15 days from coming out of Egypt. They get to Sinai, and all these supernatural things begin to happen. Moses has these encounters with God. Fifteen days. But then if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 1, starting with verse 1, it says this. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel, on this side Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazaroth and Dizahab. And, and watch this. This next verse is in, in parentheses. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, to me that's, it's almost kind of like a by the way. <laughs> there are 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. And it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel according to all the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. One of you brilliant mathematicians, or one of you that's just like me, get your phone and cheat. How many days is, is 40 years and 11 months? How much? 144,000? Is that right? Is that right? Come, come on. I want. I, I really. I know. Sometimes you say stuff like this, and you just rhetorically. I, I need help. I want to. Almost fifteen thousand. So, almost fifteen thousand days. Almost fifteen thousand days. It was eleven days from Elam to Sinai, and fifty. Or excuse me, fifteen days. From coming out of Egypt to Sinai, it was 11 days from there to Kadesh Barnea. That is, I can do the math on that one. Now I'm going to mess it up, watch. <laughs> 26 days. It was 20, if I'm, if I'm reading all of this, if I'm, if I'm getting the context here, Brother Barr, it, it, was, it was supposed to have been 26 days journey. Now, there may have been a few days of God intended them for them to camp and as he's communicating, whatever, but, but, but it was only supposed to be about a month. 
And yet it took them 15,000 days. Here's the thought I want to I just want to share with you is this. The length of the journey is not determined by the distance. The length of the journey is determined by our submission to the process and our trust in the Lord. Fifteen thousand days is not what it was supposed to have been. But because they didn't cooperate with the process as God intended, what should have took about a month took 40 years. I didn't really, um, I'll just be really transparent with you, okay? Of course, I have a feeling, I had a feeling, but I just, after all these years, I still struggle sometimes with the confidence needed. I looked at my wife, we were sitting in the family room this afternoon, and I was sitting on the couch, she was sitting in the, in the recliner, and about five, ten minutes after four, Brother Middleton, I looked over her and I said, I got nothing for this evening. And, that's, and I, I mean, I got to tell you, Mother's Day night is probably the one Sunday night out of the year I want to knock it out of the park. Because it's usually a down crowd, and so you've 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 come, you've made it, and then to, to, to this evening, it wasn't just it wasn't just a holiday. A bunch of you, bunch of you plowed through to get here. Of course, I didn't know that part at four o'clock, but I felt like the Lord finally did drop this into my spirit. And of course, every now and then I've learned through the years, He finally just gives me a bone just so I'll settle down. And then we get done with service, and I never preach, and I go, oh, that's why it had no direction. But, but I, I will say, as, 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 as I, this is what I felt, thought I felt to share, but as, as, as Brother Breckenridge was talking, by the way, I, I just got to, I'm trying to learn to stay in the spirit. I really am. I, I just read, I read somewhere on a, I think it was a post on Social media and the in the ministers group thing, I, I somehow I got a part of. But that somebody said they 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 don't use they they they've stopped basically using the term brother and sister at their church because because new people coming in they're just not comfortable with that. What in the world? What in the world? It's not it's it's not only a sign of respect, but I personally view it as a sign of affection. When I refer to you as brother so and so or sister so and so, it's it's this it's this bond we share, and everybody's welcome to get a part of that bond. So anyway, but but I, I was just thinking as we as we as we're focusing throughout this month on 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 growing and grow discipleship. It it the 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 the, the pace at which you grow the. The pace at which you go from the wilderness to the promised land is not really up to God. The distance is up to God. He sets the distance. But the time it takes you to get from point A to point B is your decision. Jacob, let me... Let me, let me borrow you for a second. Come here. I just I want you to get a little bit of a visual of something. Jacob Jacob started coming in 2020, four whole years ago. If you'd have told me in 2020 that he was about to be my come up here, that he'd be my son in law, I'd have told you you had lost your mind. But here he is. But he's he's been here about Four years now, coming up in this summer, right? And I just, I want you to get this visual. I, I don't know the age of the person I'm about to reference. But, but Brother Libby, Ron Libby, who pastored Gaithersburg CLC for so long, now his, his son, Sean, pastors. pastors. 
within about the same time that Jacob has been here. He got saved and left to go pastor a church. I, 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 want, you to, I want you to think about that for a moment. And, and, and if he wasn't my son-in-law, I'd say what I'm about to say a lot more freely. But now since he's my son-in-law, some of you will probably accuse me of just being partial, but that's okay. Hopefully you're partial to your family. But I, 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 I mean, I, I used to come home in 2020 and having conversations with Jacob. I tell my wife, man, this, this guy Jacob is something else, man. He, I didn't know God was like just setting me up. Because <laughs> in 2022 or so, I'm like, this guy ain't. No, I don't. I was dreaming in 2020. <laughs> I, I mean, I, he, would, he would sit in the conference room for five, six hours with Brother Yu and but I, I just want you to, I want you to imagine, imagine, imagine ascending somebody four years into getting saved to go pastor a church. Thank you. I, I know, I've never heard of that since. But, but the point is, it's, it's. The speed of my development. How quick I go from Elam to Kadesh Barnea has nothing to do with the length, the distance. It has to do with my engagement in the process. It, it has to do with my pursuit of the calling and the relationship that God is, is inviting me to. In a lot of ways, spiritual maturity is not limited to age. It's really limited to hunger and desire, passion. But God has already done so much here tonight. I, I'm, not, I'm not here to, to preach a message, just give you a thought. I, I know some of you are sitting there, you're not even listening to me because you're just... You're just sitting there so skeptical of what I'm saying that I'm not here to preach. You're just, I'm just kidding. I'm just messing. I'm just messing with you. I, I do, I just, I, I want you to, as, as we've been challenged by Brother Breckenridge, I just, I just want to challenge you this evening. God, God, God brought them out to bring them in. God didn't bring them out of the world, out of Egypt. His plan was not for them to come out of Egypt and wander for 40 years. He brought them out with the intention of taking them to the promised land. If you are wandering in a spiritual wilderness, and I'm not talking about the times that God sends a brother. Brother uh, Caleb Herring preached a message a couple of years ago when he was here at the beginning of the year. about that there, are, there are times in your walk with God you get led into a wilderness. I'm not talking about that. But that process of coming out of Egypt, being born again, and, and entering into what God has for you, the amount of time that takes, is it's not, it's not on God. It's not on God. Proverbs says, a man through desire separates himself, intermeddles with all wisdom. Through his desire, he separates himself. So whether it's the grow process or just your own personal relationship with God and pursuit of your, of your calling, It's not, it's not God's choice. I, I think God decides, again, God decides the distance and, and God decides things that need to happen along the way, but, but ultimately how long that takes is based on your engagement in that process. Do you realize that 
in just in three short years. Brother Middleton, th just three short years. Jesus turns the church over to the apostles, if I could say it that way. And just, those guys hadn't spent 12 years going to school, then college, then getting their bachelor's, then get, or getting their bachelor's, then getting their master's, and, and then getting their doctorate degree, you see. And those guys, those guys, most of them were probably in their late teens. So it, it doesn't take a lifetime for God to develop you if you will engage fully in that process. I don't know about you, but I don't want to turn a 26-day journey into 15,000 days of wandering. I don't want to turn a process that God intended to only take a very brief amount of time. I don't want Him to turn that in to an extended length of time of just wandering in the wilderness. God, thank You so much for Your presence. Lord, it's, it's really nothing new, but again, I don't want to ever take it for granted the way you just, you just move into this sanctuary. You just manifest your presence and ministry begins to flow out of our worship and you touch hearts and lives. I, I thank you for that. And I, I pray, God, by your grace, don't let us ever lose that. Don't let us ever become rigid and f formal that we squeeze you out of doing what you do, what you want to do. So I, I thank you, God. I thank you for how you've touched some folks in this place tonight as we've worshiped. Such a sweet, wonderful manifestation of your presence. God, I pray that, that you would help us, Lord. There are, there's giftings and callings and purposes that you have placed upon our lives. And Lord, sometimes if we're not careful, it's easy for us to sit around and think we're, we're just waiting on you to do something. We're waiting on you to produce something when in reality you're really... You're waiting on our responsiveness to the process. You're, you're waiting on our obedience, our submission, our faith. Help us tonight. God, I, I pray for any individuals in this place tonight that are, that are wandering right now. Doing circles in a wilderness that you intended for us to just simply pass through. Lord, as we spend some focus time this month talking about grow and what it's all about awaken us Lord awaken a fresh hunger a fresh desire in us to become who and what you've called us to be and but not just the desire Lord the the made-up mind to do those things that are necessary for us to be able to complete the journey that you have to take us from, from a wilderness where you've brought us out of Egypt into the fulfillment of what you have for us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, before I dismiss you, We've got a prayer request. You can join me. Actually, I'll add another one that was on realm. But um, Sister Morena, young lady that comes, requested prayer. She got a bad migraine and is heading to the ER. And I want us to pray for her. And let's also pray. Uh, there was a prayer request on realm today for uh, Brother J.R. Sowers and 
want to pray for him. So would you stand? And uh, before before we dismiss, could we join together for for uh, Marina as well as for Brother Jr. Father, we come before you right now. We lift up Marina. We lift up Brother Jr. to you, God. Lord, I pray that you would reach down right now and touch Marina, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, that you would let virtue, your virtue flow through her body right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your healing power to touch her right now, minister to her right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you would touch Brother Jr. tonight. You know whatever's going on in his body, Lord. Whatever issues, complications that are taking place, I pray that you would touch him. Right now, Lord, by the power of your Spirit, I pray, God, that healing virtue would flow. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and can I just ask you, encourage you, since it's a little earlier than we're used to, just take a few moments and greet one another, connect with somebody for a little bit before you leave. In Jesus' name. Praise God.